Hi everyone, so today I have come to you with a super awesome balloon design and a lot of YouTubers lately have been creating 3D um, kind of charm designs so today I thought I would show you how to make a, a really really easy one. This did not take long to design and it does not take long to make it all. And using this design you can just modify the string part at the end. I didn't want to post a whole video on this charm because um, it could like stir up some controversy however um, to you guys out there that play with action figures and stuff like that you might like this one so I made a little um, cute little bomb like the bomb emoji however I won't be posting a tutorial on this after you made the balloon you'll be able to make this just without adding the extra link on the string here but here's that basically it's all black here this silver is from rainbowloom.com and then I just put a little red thing here but you can add orange or yellow or whatever so anyways um, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up also I made a bouncy ball this thing actually does bounce really well so uh, yeah and you might notice my bandage finger I hurt myself I'll explain why at the end of the video but um, yeah please excuse me in the video because I have a little bit of trouble doing some stuff because it's hard with this finger but yeah anyways enough talking and let's get started with the tutorial Okay, so we're going to start with our looms, arrows pointing down, and I'm just here at the top of my loom, and we're going to choose the space where we've got the empty space here, and um, I apologize if I have any trouble at all with my finger because the band-aid does um, put a little bit less um, friction on my fingers and such. So anyways, we're going to start off by using um, your color of bands that you're going to use for the balloon part, and I'm using mango today. So, um, you're going to start off by using double bands. So, got double bands here. And you're going to twist it from this top peg. And twist it. And place it on the bottom. So you should have something like this. I'll zoom out just a teeny bit. And now we are going to use double bands again. And we're going to go across like that and twist in the center again and then we're going to do the last one that goes upwards like this so you should have something like this now and we are now going to stop using double bands we're going to use single bands at a time now because um, that's just for the beginning so now we are going to outline the whole entire figure so single bands no more twisting And we're going to go clockwise in a circle outlining the whole entire perimeter of this shape here. Like that. So now when you're done, you're now going to do the hooking process. This can be a teeny bit tricky to learn because it's hard to see on camera, but um, I hope that you guys can see. So um, we're basically going to hook the bottom two layers over. So since we use double bands, we're going to grab the bottom two layers. You are not going to go inside of the pin or anything. Make sure you stay on the very outside. Grab these two and pull over and release. Just like that. Go to this pin right here. Grab the bottom two here, see the bottom two, pull it over the pin and release. You want to pull it towards the center where all the bands were crossed. Now for the bottom, this one's the easier one. And then this one right here is the same exact thing, bottom two over. This pin here, grab the very bottom two over. And then the top one is the bottom two, pull over. Just like that. Now we are going to add another layer of all of the perimeter bands. So remember, start at the top and then go clockwise. Okay. So when you're to this point, we're now going to start the hooking process, and again, we are going to hook the bottom two layers over. So, grab the very bottom two, hook over and release. Do the same thing for all the pins. Bottom two, hook 
over. Remember, never go inside of any bands to grab those. Stay on the outside of everything. Bottom two, hook over for all of the pins. And be careful, you don't want them to fall off. Just like that. So at this point, we're already halfway done. We're going to go ahead and start to make the circle close back inwards. So for this, we're going to double loop all the bands. We're still going to put the outline perimeter bands. However, we're going to double loop all of them. This basically just means you're going to place it on the two. Slowly stretch it out so that we don't break the band. Then you're going to twist it and then place it back onto itself. Just like that. So you should have something like this now. You're going to do the same thing for all the rest of the perimeter bands. So twist it and then place it back onto itself like that. If your bands keep breaking, that could be a quality issue. Um, Rainbow Loom bands should work fine, or at least the bands that I get from RainbowLoom.com work perfectly fine for me. And I have made this in various colors and band types, so um, I know that all of them work fine for me. And then do the very last one up here. Like that. So once you're to this point, we can go ahead and start the hooking process. Again, we are going to grab only the very bottom two layers and hook over the pin and release. Same goes for all the pins. It doesn't matter what order in which you hook the pins, it's just easier to go um, in the same order of hooking every time so that way you know that you didn't forget to hook any bands on a, a certain pin. Okay, so now you should have something like this. Push your bands down and we are going to put on um, this one last band here before we close it off. You're going to put this on a single band right here, put this on all six pins, just like how you would do a hexafish. So you should have something like this now. And basically you're going to hook over all of the bottom bands except for this one that you put over here. So you're going to hook all the bands that are on the pins except for the very top one. So be very careful on this part. I highly, highly recommend using a metal tip hook for this just because Hooking this is um, a ton of stress on your hook. All the bands except for this one that we just put on, remember. And see here, grabbing all the bands at the bottom and pulling them all over. If you'd like to save some stress on your hook, you can just grab like one at a time and pull over or two at a time then grab the other two and hook over as long as they all get hooked over. So at this point we kind of need to stuff it now. So uh, what you're going to do is you're going to grab a couple bands. Let me go back to my pack of bands. Um, I recommend stuffing probably five or six bands, but it doesn't really matter. I definitely would recommend using the same color band. However, if you have uh, a different color you'd like to use, then I guess you can use that too. But I highly recommend using the same color because they peep out a little bit. So I am just taking the back of a paintbrush. You can use a chopstick. Um, I find the hook doesn't do too good of a job, but you just want to twist a couple bands in your fingers and place it inside here. So just make sure that gets in there really well. And you don't want them to slip out or anything, so I'm using your hook to make sure they all get in there, or your paintbrush or chopstick or whatever. Um, making sure they get in there well will help you later. So, let's just stuff those in there, and I'm going to put two more in. So, um, twisting them and um, double looping them in your fingers, I find, helps get them in there a little bit easier. However, um, you don't have to twist them if you don't want to. Okay, so I've got all the bands stuffed in there, and now I'm going to show you how to prep it to take it off of your loom. So firstly, we're going to grab the top band here, pull it off very, very carefully, and then place it onto the center pin here. So you should have something like this now. And now we're going to transfer this bottom one over to the center pin as well, just like that. 
Then you're going to grab this bottom one here, put it on the center pin, then this top one here, like that, and place it onto the center pin. Okay, so that can take a while for some people, so it's totally okay if you're taking a little bit longer than I did. I have done that quite a few times already, so. Now we are going to close it off. You're going to take two bands, place it across those two. Then you're going to hook the three bottom layers over. So you should be picking up three layers. You can pick them up one at a time if you'd like. It doesn't matter. Um, just to save you some stress on your hook, you can grab them one at a time. But, yep, okay, I grabbed all three of those. Carefully pull those over like that. And now I am done. So now what you want to do is you want to pick these both ends up on your hook. So pick right side and then the left side like that. And you're going to get this kind of squished ball. You might have bands sticking out. That's totally fine. We're going to tuck them in later. But for now, um, you can shape it a little bit if you'd like. Just make it more round and spherical because it was kind of squished in your loom. And mine does have stuff sticking out here, but we're going to fix that later. Anyways, now you are going to take two of whatever color band you are going to use for the um, kind of like the string of the balloon. And this part is a little bit tricky, so basically you want to lay these two on top of each other. So right on top of the left. Reach into the right band and grab this loop here. So into the right band, grab this loop. And then you want to reach inside the uh, left side, but you want to go through the back of it and grab this loop here. So you should have something like this. Okay, and then after that you just want to pull lightly, so that way there's a fuzzy on here for my sweater. Um, you just want to pull lightly so that way you get it not like this. So, um, you can watch that part over again if you'd like, however, this is basically how you tie this knot. You're going to grab your hook with the balloon on it. Grab one end of it, it doesn't matter which end of the white tie that you pull through, but you just want to pull it through like this. Grab this end and tie a slip knot. Like that. And pull to secure. And it's okay if it's a little bit loopy or anything, you just pull on whatever end is a little bit too short. And it should even out the piece like that. So you can keep tucking on it. I'm just going to stop here, but anyways. Um, you can tie an, a knot at the end if you'd like to make it so that way there's not a loop there. Um, that's a little bit hard with my band-aid right now um, because I don't get as much friction to hold on to stuff. But um, I will try my best to show you. Basically you just loop it into a knot, your standard knot that you would tie. So, oh, look at that, I got it. So basically you just loop it around and tie that. And, oh. I made it come undone. We'll try this again. So, and a lot of you commented saying that you like it when I leave my mistakes in to show that I'm not perfect. Which I thought that was kind of funny. But, um, see if I can tie that, pull the knot this time. There we go. And just pull it a little bit close to the tip. Again, if one end is longer than the other, like one string, you can just pull it on the smaller one and it will even the two out. So, you can see they're, they're the same. So, um, that's basically how you tie the little string part of this. I will show you now how to add the little uh, tie right here. Basically, it's super easy. You just grab a single band, wrap it around three to four times. I like wrapping it around four times just so that way it's a little bit more secure. But honestly, it doesn't matter. Like that. So there's the little tie right there, so that way it looks more like a balloon. To fix this stuff that's sticking out, basically you just pull the bands apart and stuff it back inside. And again, that is a teeny bit difficult with a band-aid on. Um, you can use your hook to help you out, and basically see where it's sticking out, grab a band and tuck them underneath. Okay, that was a little bit difficult doing that on camera, but I managed to tuck them in. I did use my hook to help me, but anyways, we are now done with this super cute little balloon.
So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I did have a turquoise jelly balloon, however, I don't know where I put it. So anyways, um, these are all the ones I have with me right now. I did take a picture on Instagram if you're wondering how I took it. I took it upside down like this. But anyways, those are the balloons. Thank you so much for being patient with my bandaged finger here. Um, I cut myself on an accident with um, a blade in art, so that happened. But yeah. Don't forget to also go check out my bouncy ball. This ball actually really does bounce, and it's basically just the balloon part right here without the string. So I have a video on this so you don't have to struggle to find out a way to tie it together and stuff like that. So don't forget to go check this out. It's on my channel as well. And yeah, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up, and also hit the subscribe button if you haven't already, and find me on all my social media sites linked down in the description box below, and I will see you guys in my next tutorial. Bye! Thank you.